So you've moved over to Blender and you're missing the days and after effects when you could just drag and drop an asset into the timeline and set the transfer mode to screen or add and it looks perfect. Well, in Blender, it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is enable the images to planes add on in the Blender preferences. And then in the viewport, hit Shift A, images, images to planes and select your asset. Import it, then go to the material or rendered view mode and bada bing, look at them sparks, aren't they beautiful? But you can't see through them. So let's do the Blender equivalent of setting it to add by going to the shader editor and deleting the principal BSDF connecting the color to the shader output, then adding in a transparency node and making sure in the material options that the blend mode is set to alpha blend. Uh, also adding in an add node and then connecting the transparency and the color to the add node and connecting the add node to the shader output. And bam, you can see through it, look at that. But we have sparks and we want them to glow like crazy. So we're gonna go ahead and add in an emission shader and another add shader and connect the two together and connect the color to the emission shader. Go to the render settings if you're using EV, enable bloom and turn that strength up on the emission shader and look at that glow, isn't it great? I love EV bloom, but you know, we have some gross looking artifacts and we don't want them to be there because they are gross. So we just have to add in an RGB curves node right before the emission shader and just play around with the curves. Mine actually automatically cured my case of artifact itis, but if yours doesn't, just play around with the curves and you can kind of boost anything you want really, just you know, do whatever you want. But let's say that you have a black and white asset and you want to colorize it. Add a color ramps node instead in front of the emission shader uh, and then just drag the black value up a little bit to get rid of the artifacts and then you can change the white value to any color you want to make some crazy looking sci-fi sparks or just more vibrant red sparks. I don't know, you do you, I don't control you. Um, but make sure that you enable bloom still because it is simply breathtaking. But oh no, your sparks are now casting an ugly shadow in the shape of the plane. All you have to do is change that shadow mode to something other than opaque and you're in the clear. Here I was changing the color of my sparks to blue because I was feeling a little frisky. Another Kexnex certified quick tip is if you go into edit mode and slide vertices up with G twice, you can like crop your asset. But if you transform your vertices in any way, like with scale, uh, you'll distort your footage. Also, if you go into the shader editor, you can actually mess around with when your asset starts, like with the start frame and the offset frame. So you can choose when you want it to start in the Blender timeline. So pretty cool. Do whatever you want, play around with it. If you have different materials, you can make them start at different points. Cool stuff. Anyways, I'm Kex next, and um, I don't know, subscribe, support me on Patreon. <laughs>